Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Princess Auto's See It Work, the show where you see all of our fantastic Princess Auto products live in action. And you'll notice today we're not on campus, we are actually live here at the Cloverdale Forge with none other than Mr. Matt Jenkins. Hi Dan. Hi, how are you? I'm doing good. <laughs> are you excited for today? I, I do this every day, it's always exciting. <laughs> Matt has spoken like a true professional. Well, <laughs> Princess Auto, as, as Matt knows, we're actually launching our line of forging and bladesmithing materials coming up, our propane fueled forges, as well a lot of different other materials. So today we're gonna showcase those for you and you're gonna see how they work. And we're gonna encourage everyone watching to get into forging. Now, before we, we start going here, we're already throwing heat from these, but- I was gonna say, uh, you picked the hottest day to come. We did, it is probably 50 degrees in here, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a meteorologist. Um, <laughs> Are you seeing lots more folks get into forging these days? Absolutely. Uh, it's been great to see folks kind of uh, take on like the, the fundamentals of metalworking. Um, I mean, it doesn't get any more basic than hammer and anvil and heat and turn it around like that. It's pretty awesome. All right, well today we are here and we are gonna make a knife. Yes. We're just, gonna make a blade. Yeah. Um, so as we're gonna be, we're gonna walk through the processes, show you some of the cool products that we have. Uh, and during that time, please, as always, feel free to send in your questions. We'll do our best to answer them live on air. We have a blacksmith here, so please pepper us with questions. We'll do our best to let, uh, let Matt answer all of them. Because we have, what, an hour to do this? Perfect. <laughs> You're like, an hour? An, an hour, hour in this heat? Wow. Yeah. Um, and also, we're going to have a prize again. Today, we're going to be giving away a pair of these gloves. So if you ask a question, if you ask a question, we are going to pick someone at the end who has asked a question. And we'll give you these gloves, these brand new Trial by Fire gloves, which is what I'm going through today at Trial by Fire here at Cloverdale Forge. So before we get started, what do I, I can't just start forging like this. No, I? we gotta get just some safety gear. Okay, so that's, I got a bunch of stuff over here. Yeah. Um, Cause you're, you're looking too cool. <laughs> so let's put some more stuff on top of it. Okay, so let's start. We got goggles. Which, which yeah. of these two sets do I use? I use the clear ones so you can see things. The other ones are better for looking directly into the flame, but we're not gonna be looking directly into the flame. <laughs> so these now. ones, we, we're gonna, we carry these at Prince Auto. These are for looking directly into the flame. These ones, which I'll be wearing today, are not for that. They're just no. for what we'll be doing. Keeping things out of your eyes. Okay, so let's move on. So I got the goggles. I don't know why I started with goggles. I probably well, should have started well, with this. Yeah, well, a good leather apron is a great way to start. Okay, so leather apron. Yeah, and that it's just fire retardant and hot stuff bounces off it mostly. Okay. Mostly. Mostly, that's that's not. I mean, you look considering. like you've got fancy clothes. Uh, you it doesn't, they're not stuff. fancy, they're not fancy. I shop at the <laughs> secondhand store, so we can burn through mine. All right, gloves. So I got two sets of gloves here. I brought two sets, both Watson gloves, very nice. Um, what are the shiny ones for? They're, uh, they reflect the heat. So if you're standing in front of a flame and you're just trying to reflect the heat, those are the ones to go for. So if you're taking things in and out of the forge, yeah. um, great to use. The other ones are better if you're picking up hot stuff. Okay, so these, and they're aluminized, is that right or something? Aluminized like reflective something or others. Kevlar, special No, feature. the other ones are Kevlar. But, oh, these ones are these Kevlar. These ones are Kevlar. And these ones are awesome. Um, They've got really great dexterity in them. I'm, I'm super impressed, even though they look bulky. They do look bulky, but I did try them on before. Not that I have been forging before, but I did swing right. a hammer to practice. But uh, but yeah, they do feel nice. With those they do gloves feel and nice. the goggles, it looks like you're on the ski hill. <laughs> well I'm ready said. to hit the, I'd rather be on the slopes right now, a bit cooler. <laughs> okay, so let's let's get started. We've got, right. so I guess the most important part is, is the forges. Yeah, we, we, we've got the two forges that you guys brought, yep. um, and they're cranking out Great gobs of heat right now. So, um, you've got the three burner and the one burner. So this one, I believe this is the Mighty Forge. It's Pro Point, Mighty, For Mighty Forge Supplier Pro Point. It's the brand that we have it under. Mm -hmm. That is the master, the three burner. And this one over here is the apprentice. I know, but the apprentice can do a lot of work. So yeah, as a, in your line of work, which have you been using the most? I, I, I would use them both. Um, this one just gives you a larger uh, furnace box so you can heat up a lot more. It's nice, you can, um, oh, that's not even on. No, fully. I've only <laughs> had one burner running. So you can turn off uh, a couple of the burners and just have one going. Um, so it'll just sit there and idle while it uh, slowly warms your steel. And then if you need to crank it up, you can crank it up. Okay. Uh, the apprentice here has just the one burner, but it's more than hot enough to get done what we're going to be doing today. All right. So yeah. how, how hot is this going at right now? Orange. Orange hot. Yeah. That is an official 
orange hot. I well, I mean, when you think about it, numbers are a made up thing anyway. Fair. So yeah. I can see that it's orange, it needs to be orange, and that's when it's good and hot enough. Sometimes we get red, sometimes we get yellow, sometimes we get white. <laughs> They're all good temperatures. So we don't want it to go white though, because that would be too hot. That would be too hot. Okay. That's when you're starting to burn metal up. All right, well, let's get this, let's get okay. the process started. So, so what are we making? Did, did you have a, we're making this. We're going to we make go. uh, something similar to this. We're going to okay. make a smaller version. This is a little bit big for uh, kind of hand hammer today. Uh, but this is just a quick little Bowie knife. Um, we're going to make the handle part first. So we're going to start with um, some scrap steel. So okay. we're going to make this, uh, it's called a junkyard knife. So we're oh, going to nice. make it from junkyard, junkyard stuff. Knife. Because uh, we're not really sure exactly what the steel is. It started as, excuse me for just a sec. I was hoping um, to make a katana today, but I guess this will be good. <laughs> well, that's ambitious. <laughs> um, so we, we, that piece of metal started as a truck spring oh. or a trailer spring. I don't know exactly the prominence of this. Yeah. So uh, the one attribute that is really great about making knives from springs is that they're cheap. Yes. So we can make a lot of them and we yeah. can mess up a lot of them before we make a nice one. So that's what we're going to be using today. You can use a new steel. I have some new steel here too. This is a, just a plain carbon steel, a 1084. And if you want to make sure that your steel is pristine, you can start yeah. new, but. So if someone wasn't making, what did you call it? A garbage knife? You didn't a call junkyard. it a, a junkyard. Because knife. it came from the junkyard. I don't want to say garbage, garbage knife. knife. If you were making, so it if, might be a garbage. If knife. someone wanted to make like a nice kitchen knife, yes. For for example, what kind? They wouldn't want to use this kind. They wouldn't want to use the spring steel. Sure, you can use the we spring could? steel. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, if you are, there might be cracks in it that you yeah. cannot see. So if you're giving it away or giving it to someone else then Me, you yeah. might want to start with something that's known instead of something that's unknown. Fair enough. But lots of character in it either right. way if you did but that. But it will so. work. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I mean, blacksmithing's pretty basic. Yeah. You get it hot, you hit it hard, and you quit when you're done. So It's I that mean, easy. So the material that, is the simple part. The way you phrase it like that, everyone should have a forge. Yeah. Yeah. So the first step that we're going to do is um, isolate that handle. I don't know where you ended up putting that knife. Oh, there, there it is. We go. So that's a bad start. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take the... Well, here, hold on to that one. Okay. And I'm going to grab my tongs. Um, and this is basically kind of the step we're going to go through. So we're going to take this bar and we're going to neck it down and that will be the handle and then that will be the blade of our okay. handle. So this one's still a little bit hot, but we're going to start with uh, just a piece of plain Jane steel that we got here that came off of that um, spring. And I've, I'm just knocking off the scale here to start. Okay. And then we're going to isolate Guess I should put my kind goggles on. on. That's a great, great start. <laughs> this is just a little tool that I made to help me get kind of the handle isolated there. And you can see we've necked it down and then we'll just slowly draw go that from out. there. Okay. It might go just a little bit further here. And you can do it without this. You just might not get as nice results. Okay. Yeah, so if you did this without your custom tool, yeah. your that would not that handle would not look as good. It might look more like this one. Yeah. That I did without it. Which let me grab that. You can see it's not as sharp a transition. Mm, gotcha. So I'm gonna throw this back in the fire here. Okay. And we'll let it get back up to heat, because you gotta strike while the iron's hot, and if we hammer <laughs> too much, we ain't gonna get anything done. Oh, we've got lots of time. We oh, great. Uh, I'm just going to check, like, like I said again, please send in your questions for Matt, anything about foraging, about the lines uh, that we are currently bringing in at Princess Auto. Um, all, the, all the safety gear that I'm wearing here today, you can get at Princess Auto. Oh, here we go. We got some, we got some questions. Um, questions already. Okay. Grant in Winnipeg, what's a good starter project for someone to begin with when getting started with foraging? I would start with coat hooks. Uh, coat hooks? Well, so... Uh, 2016, uh, we embarked here at Cloverdale Forge. I was complaining in 2015 to my lovely wife and business partner, and she yeah. said, stop complaining, because I was complaining about how boring coat hooks are. I yeah. mean, they're a very simple thing. I was showing you them earlier. Yeah. We make them by the hundreds around here, but not a very, there's lots of great things to learn. Yeah. But after you've learned them all, You've learned them You've all. You've learned them all. So we yeah. did a project and we made a different hook for each day of the year. Wow. 366 different types of hooks. And there's lots to learn in them. Yeah. Tapering, 
there's half face blows, there's twisting. Um, I can basically cover all the blacksmithing and forging steps in a hook very soon. And those are great projects like you like to start with because yeah. you can do them in these smaller forges Absolutely. and you can own your craft early on. Before you can you mess it up and you yeah. can start over real quick. Yeah. All right, I'm going to draw this out here real quick. Okay. So now that I've that got is, that, sorry, what were you going to say? Just pure power. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> While you're doing that, I'll ask you another question. Do we, as we talked about before, I'm wearing these great Watson trial by fire gloves. Yeah. The material in these, what, what is it mainly? Uh, as far as I know, it's got a leather outside and uh, Kevlar on the inside. The Kevlar inside, which gives it that the heat resistance. The heat resistance that you need. Yeah, it's kind of like a wool blanket. Except wool blankets keep the hot in, <laughs> this keeps <laughs> the hot out. Gotcha. And Kevlar is not flammable, like wool. Otherwise, it'd smell a lot like burnt <laughs> hair in here. It would not be good. No, I don't think so. No. So how much longer we got to heat that now? Not too much. So okay. I've drawn it out a fair way, but I'm going to draw it a little bit more. I'm going to switch to the horn here. Um, and the horn, what it will do is it'll help me draw it out faster. It'll look uglier. Um, but because there's less surface area, yeah. um, we're going to get more force. Okay. Pounds per square inch. If we reduce the square inches, we get more pounds. Makes sense. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. And these Kanka anvils also available at Princess Auto as a part of the new Forge blade smithing so. line. What is that? It's a real nice anvil. I've been using it. I really like this shape. So we might be getting off topic here, but Jerry wants to know, are these are these uh, forges good for forge welding? Are these? That's a great question and one that I was curious about. <laughs> uh, so hold on just a second, because I do have a piece. Oh, Jerry, uh, we're getting we're getting some we're getting inside. This here. was done in the so this is a. Let's can we hold this up. Yeah, sure. Let's hold them up. So this was a piece that we did in these forge. Well, we did in the master forge folded it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and yeah. got it hot enough to a yellow heat. There we go, a little bit hotter. Uh, and bashed it together with some of your yeah. forge borax, a little yeah. warm. Oh yeah, a little warm, a little warm. Let's try, let's <laughs> put on my Watson gloves. But, yeah, I was gonna say. How about that, hey? Wow, look at that. But you can see that we've got, I cut it up so that you can see kind of the laminations are all fused together. Yeah. So they do get hot enough to forge weld in. That's cool. But you. I we, recommend using your flux. We need the flux. Which I hear you guys are now carrying too. We also have the flux as well, so you got it all. Great. There you go. So, let, let me, uh, a little yeah, warm, just little keep warm. that where you need it. You know what, we'll keep it right here. Yeah. It's a little souvenir. There you go. I'm gonna take another heat on this, and okay. we'll smooth it out, and then I'll get you swinging the big hammer for me. Oh, there we go. Now I'm We'll now put I'm you to work, because you just look too unheated there. <laughs> okay, so we've got this tapered down fairly well. Yep. It's big enough for a handle, it's about four and a half inches, give or take. But because I did most of that work on the horn, it's pretty lumpy. So we want to flatten it out. So blacksmiths have a tool that we call the flatter. The flabber. Because it flattens things. We're not a complicated Very, Hey, flatter. that's straightforward is better. <laughs> yeah. The only problem is it takes three hands. Got to hold the material. Yeah. Got to hold the top tool. Someone's got to swing the hammer. Well, so, I can swing the hammer. I'm going to give you the hammer Look to swing. That. Thank you. Wow. And I'm going to bring that piece of metal out and we'll smooth it out okay. real quick. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. Hit it. Hit it. Like it owes you money. Yeah. There we Hit. go. Yeah. 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 Okay. We're forging. One more time. Yep. Yep. One more. There you go. Look at how that. smooth that makes it. Wow. You're a smooth operator, Dan. Now we're getting the now we're getting the sweat going in here. <laughs> you a little dew growing on your forehead. Yeah. You're all ready to go. It's good. Okay. So I like how that looks. Yeah. We just need it's a little bit long. I don't want a blade that long because they're only useful for television competitions <laughs> and I don't know. 
And Comic whatever Con. else you yes. Comic Con. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to cut it yeah. off. We're going to make it a little bit shorter, and we're going to make a useful camp night. Okay. A buoy that, night. That's, that sounds reasonable. Yeah. Well, you, while you get that ready to go, I'm going to flip back again and see what other questions we got coming in. Um, Kevin and Transcode, a simple question here. What tools do you need to start forging with? So I think we've got most of them yep. here. Hammer, anvil, and uh, something to hold it with, and a forge. And a forge. You don't forget the forge. You need something hot. Yeah. You need something to heat get that Get it metal. hot. So if you think about the three steps, get it hot, hit it hard, and quit when you're done. To get it hot, you need a forge. forge. To hit it hard, you need something to hit it between and with. Yeah. And then when you're done, just walk away. Yeah. <laughs> just, just walk away. away. Walk don't away. keep fussing with it. All right. I'm going to cut this off. So now, okay. just like before, we can drive a chisel through the material or well, because that requires three hands. Yeah. And I don't have those. Well, you're, I'm here. I got two of them. Yeah. Well, I'm going <laughs> to replace you with a hole in the anvil. That sounds a lot safer. And so we're just going to drive. That sounds a lot safer. We're going to drive the yeah. material into the chisel rather than the chisel it into the material. Boiling. And we'll just cut it. I'm not going to cut it all the way through. I'm just going to cut it most of the way through. Yeah. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to dull my uh, chisel. Okay. So we'll grab a second set of tongs, and we'll wriggle till asunder. So we have a question Put here. Put that there so you don't burn yourself. Are there any steel supplies, Leo asked, are there any steel supplies I should avoid using? Steel supplies. Yeah. Suppliers? Supplies. Uh. Supplies. Uh. I guess steel material? Um, I would avoid using, uh, if you're talking junkyard steels, anything with a hole in it, like a jack uh, hammer bit or something like that. If it's got a hole, you can trap air into it. And if you trap air, then you superheat the air and it explodes. So you don't want that. Avoid that. Avoid that. <laughs> um, uh, galvanized, anything that's got a galvanization on it, uh, don't use that at all because uh, zinc yeah. poisoning. Yeah. It'll kill you faster than you can think. <laughs> That's scary stuff. I know. Well, if you're just tuning in now, we're <laughs> here live at the Cloverdale Forge. I'm Dan. This is Matt, the blacksmith here at Cloverdale Forge. And you're watching See It Work, uh, the show where you get to see some of Princess Auto's great products live in action. Today, we are clearly doing forging. It is getting very hot. We've got our blade cooking again, mm -hmm. heating so that bad boy up. The next step on this, Dan, is we're going to switch to this little board here. So now that we've got the handle drawn out. Let's hold them right up. Okay, here we go. We're going to draw out this, and it's a preform. And that will allow us to forge it into this shape. Gotcha. So we're going to go from this to this. Well, we're going to make this first, and then we'll go into that. Hopefully, okay. we'll get to that through the first heat here. OK. So this is just the template. Well, it's putting the material where we want the material to be before we need it to be there. OK. If that makes sense. That Yes. You just hang on to that and don't don't shiv me. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to draw this down a little bit more. Now we're getting to uh, a shape. Can you, David and Hamilton wants to know, can you use railway spikes? You can, but they're not. How hard is that to use? Well. So railroad spikes aren't necessarily a good steel. Um, typically, they're actually very soft steel and hard to get hard, or hard to harden. Hard to harden. Hard to harden. <laughs> yeah. Hard, hard, hard. <laughs> um, so you have to sharpen them a lot. Yeah. I mean, so it's a lot more work. Any steel will cut. Mild steel will cut, but it won't hold an edge for very long. Okay. And railroad spikes are really awesome because you can see what you're making it out of. And that's a really cool thing. Uh, but it, uh, I don't find that they make great knives. OK. So All don't right. make a knife out of a railroad spike. Well, you can. They make good <laughs> practice, right? I mean, make letter openings out of them. True. Once again, remember, fire in your questions, and you will have a chance at the end of the show to win these beautiful Watson Trial by Fire gloves. So make sure you ask your question. Even if it doesn't get on air, you will still be entered into the draw. We're just hammering away here. Almost there. Hey. Let's just straighten things out. Terry and Moosejaw wants to know, can you use an infrared thermometer to accurately gauge temperature of the steel? You can. 
There you go, Terry. You can. Can. I don't have one. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, you can if you're really getting into heat treating. So we're going to do a blacksmith heat treat here, which is close enough. Okay. Uh, but if you want to be more scientific about it, you can get yourself a heat treating oven that has a temperature range. It's just like your home oven. Um, I have a little toaster oven, um, which yeah. probably came from Princess Auto. I don't remember. <laughs> Um, that will get close enough for most yeah. most knives. Professionals yeah. have they need uh, those a little more robust. Yes, yeah. but systems. for for the average forger, toaster oven and yeah. a forge works fine for me. Yeah. Excuse me for just. Oh yeah, don't here. don't let me get in your way. Well, I don't want to burn you. Don't oh burn man. You. Okay, here's a good question. David in Hamilton, Steel Town, shocker. Uh oh. What is the difference in 1084 steel and other steels, and what is the width of the new 1084 that you could use to make the knife? Well, so 1084, uh, the stuff that I had shown just a second ago, uh, yeah. is inch and a quarter by quarter, and that is big enough for just about any kitchen knife you'll need. Yeah. And probably more so. Yeah. Um, the 10 series steels. Okay. <laughs> Let me put I'm, this down for just a second. No, no, this is, it's a complicated subject. So <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about metallurgy, but if, if you think, consider steel is like a swimming pool. Okay. I, I can imagine why I've got swimming pool on the mind. Yeah. <laughs> but if you took a you bunch of, yeah. <laughs> if you took a bunch of uh, beach balls and threw them in a swimming pool, yeah. that would be iron, iron on a molecular level and you tried to walk across that, it'd be all bouncy and you wouldn't yeah. be able to get air. Just like, ugh. But if you took a truckload of tennis balls and backed it up, dumped in the tennis balls and they fill in all the spots, that's like adding carbon to the iron. Okay. And that makes it much stiffer. Now you can walk now across you can the walk across. swimming pool. Yeah. yeah. So that's what steel is. Now the simplest steels out there, they just have carbon and they have iron. Tennis balls and peach balls. And that's what the 10 series is. So the 1084 is just plain carbon, 10, 84 means 84 points of steel. So it's 0.84% of carbon. Okay. Okay. So now there's 40 series, I there's 30 gonna... series, there's 50 series, there's all sorts of series, but usually the last two numbers dictate how hard or how much carbon is in it. So if you got 5160, you're looking at 60 points of carbon. So it's a medium carbon steel instead of a high carbon steel, yeah. which 80 would be a high carbon steel. David, I hope that answers your question. I've got tennis and beach balls. I've, got, so I, I've retained that amount of information from that. Okay. Oh, that is, that is good. So we've got this to a preform now. I'm ready to start drawing or hammering in the bevels. Okay. So we want to thin out this edge and keep the back uh, nice and thick. Okay. And that'll allow it to curve back up like a buoy knife. I'm gonna put that back in and get it hot. There was an earlier question about how hot these forges burn. I, uh, I've confirmed they burn around 1300 degrees Celsius. Woo! That's so more than hot enough. That is, and they heat quickly, as we can tell. Um, and I can't, I, like that's the single burner, I believe. So once you get all three cranking on that, yeah, it's uh, it's hot. It's hot. It, it'll weld. Yeah. Which is it'll, it'll weld, which is all what you, you really want. need. Yeah. If it gets any hotter than that, you get into other terrible situations. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll start. As you watch, as I hammer on just one of this edge, it'll start to straighten out. Oh yeah. So obviously this, this is what you do. As a general do-it-yourselfer who picks up a forge and says, I wanna make this knife, what kind of realistic expectation should they have for their end product and for the time it's going to take them? Practice. Yeah, just keep you working put in on the it. practice. Don't expect the first one to be beautiful. Yeah. Expect the hundredth one to be beautiful. Yeah. Um, or strive to have the hundredth one beautiful. As soon as you get to that hundredth one after doing so many of them, the big problems become, the small problems become the, the big, big problems, problems and the big problems go away. Yeah. So, That's, it's, that's good. Uh, that's good life advice too, right there. Well, take that home. Yeah. Yeah. Take that. Yeah. <laughs> so here we go. We're just gonna let this curve up just a little bit more. Someone asked, we carry forged steel anvils. You're looking at one right here. This is the Kanka anvil, which we do carry in our stores. 
It's nice and hard. Actually, I really like it. What is it? Actually, that's a good question. Daryl asks, what is the uh, surface hardness range on this guy? I don't know, but I do have a ball bearing. Everyone always likes to see the ball bearing test. Oh, here we go. We're getting the test live. So I'll let you, I mean, what does that mean? I don't know. So if you take that and drop it on the anvil, okay, and you'll see how far it bounces back, it's pretty good. That's pretty hard. Yeah. I mean, if we do it on one of the old anvils, you get almost the same amount of return. Yeah. yeah I've been pretty happy with it. Ball bearings are hard. They bounce. Once again, you are watching See It Work. We are live here today at the Cloverdale Forge here with Matt Jenkins, and we are putting together one of the best darn knives you are ever going to see. And when I say we, I mean mostly Matt. <laughs> We're almost I, there. Too. I will be. I'm ready for my next duty, I think. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to draw it out a little bit more. Yeah. So we're going to double strike, and you're going to hit it where okay. I hit it. And then the part the part that I'm most excited for is that I've seen the quench, the quenching. The quench, yes. The quench. We we are almost there. That is awesome. You ready? Then we're going to do it in an oil. OK. So what, what's the best kind of oil to quench? Can you just use any kind of oil? Well, there are industrial oils out there. Parks, which is what the professional use. Parks 50, I think, is the type of it. Um, for the amount of work that we do in yeah. knives, hobby, um, canola oil works great. Okay. It's got the, about the same consistency. It smells like French fries. <laughs> well, you can't, can't go wrong. Yeah, can't go can't wrong. Go wrong with but that. you can't eat what you're quenching. <laughs> no. And what I do like, I do like this too. The quench, the quench oil is housed in this fantastic Princess Auto ammo box. That yeah, is very I think nice. They're on sale this week. Yeah, they. Well, they always I was are. Grab a few more. Yeah, look at that. All right, you ready to swing the big hammer? I'm again? ready. I'm ready. All right, we're gonna Training flatten for this, this out. My whole life. Your whole life. <laughs> All right, give me a good wallop. Harder. Okay, do the other side. All right, there we go. Oh, now Got a little down. bit of a waller to take out, but I'll do that with the hand hammer real quick. All right. It's when we get close like this, you got to do a little bit more futzing than you would otherwise. Yeah, because that's all, like you said, that's when the little things for if I was doing this myself, I wouldn't notice that probably. I would go to the quench and we're done. Well, well, once you quench it, it gets really hard and then ah. it's hard to grind. Yeah, then we don't done. want that. <laughs> no. So See, we want to make it as here. close as possible. Okay. This is, as much as we're sweating for this, this is the easiest way to get this done. I mean, if you think about the amount of electrons that you consume to like run a grinder, yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work to make those electrons. <laughs> All right, so we're going to just take this little waller out here in the back of the knife. Once again, you're seeing a close up of not only some heat and hammering, but of our Kanka anvil that we are carrying at Princess Auto. Okay, I'm going to straighten out the handle part here. A lot of finesse work going on right now. And then we're pretty much... So, Curtis wants to know, would you recommend these gloves for a flat roofer? <laughs> uh, I would say yes. Um, I'm gonna say yes. Probably? They are, they are very comfortable and heat resistant. I've already been hit with a few sparks and luckily they mostly went to my legs, which are not covered. So it was good. That's good. Yeah. All right. That's so trial by fire. We're going to take this up to a critical temperature next, okay. and then we're going to dump it in the oil. There we go. So we'll drag What's a critical temperature? Here. Critical temperature is where there's a phase change in the crystalline structure <laughs> of the steel. Okay. So All that means is when it becomes non-magnetic. We're get, getting it really hot. It gets really hot. what I'm taking hot. from that. So we're getting it real hot. So hot. So I've got just over here. What do you here, need? I need this guy. Okay. So. What I said was magnetic. So magnets stick to things. Yep. But when you get up to an orange heat, it stops sticking to things. So the other thing I need is a handle because I don't want to burn off my thingies. So we'll take this magnet. Here we go. The will it stick test. So it'll stick back here, right? Yeah. But it won't stick no. there. 
So it's ready to go. So that's okay. the temperature we want to put it in the oil. Okay. So we'll put it back in. We'll get one last little heat there. And I'll let you do the honors. Oh, thank you. You've worked for it. I, I, have I? Have I though? Yeah, I, I appreciate that honesty. So I'm just pulling it out pulling and dipping it, out, it in. Just like you're slicing into a cake. Okay, anytime? Anytime. I trust you. Don't mess it up. This is the make or break. Slicing it into a cake. In you go. Here we go. Boom, go. Yeah. And you're just going to let it cool. Let those smoke bubbles bubble. Wow. You pull it out now, you'll get that flash, but we don't really want that because okay. there's a camera right there. All right, let's pull it out and take a look. And there you go. Look at that. And you can see that there's some white spots. Quench. That's that's our quench. So those white spots. Yeah, what are those? That's uh, different grain structure. And that just is the harder of the grain structures, which means that we're almost there. OK. Let me grab a quick towel. Wow. All right, so just a reminder, if you haven't asked a question yet, ask it now because we will be giving away a pair of these fantastic Watson Trial by Fire gloves in the next couple of minutes. Um, a few more questions filtering in. Okay. Can you forge aluminum? You can. You can. Also, can you heat up two pieces of metal and weld them together by hammering them on top of each other? You can, but you have to get you up have to, to the yellow heat and use some of the... You don't yeah. have to, but it makes it easier if you use some of the flux. Yellow heat and flux. Yeah. So, Andre, you can do that but make sure you have what you need to make that happen. It takes a little bit of temperature yeah. control. Don wants to know, do the forges consume a lot of propane? Well, you've been using these for, for a little bit now. Uh, How have you yeah, found them? Yeah, we've been running this one off a little 20 pound tank, like a little barbecue tank. Yeah. And it's, I don't know, we still got most of a the tank there. So, yeah, and it's and been it's a while. it's been going a day yeah, or two. A couple, yeah. Yeah. So, it, I mean, I haven't used them extensively, yeah. but um, they are very conservative when it comes to fuel. That's compared good. to well, your other, yeah, my other one, yeah. which is a bit yeah. of a tank. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the last step here? Okay. We're one of the last so steps. So we're gonna um, still a little warm, but it's below critical temperature. So I'm just gonna like take the last little bit of the heat out there. Okay. And the last little bit is just to do kind of the final grinding to it. We forged uh, to shape. Yeah. Um, and then there's an old saying in the old English textbooks to for a good edge to win, forge thick and file thin. And so now um, we'll either use abrasive papers or grind. Um, I'll just use a little angle grinder here real quick. Okay. Right here, back here at the vise. And, I will. Uh, uh, I'll be just about two seconds. I'm going to move out of the way so folks can get a, get a look at this angle grinder action. And it's what everybody needs, more sparks. There is no shortage of sparks here at the Cloverdale Forge. I hear that you guys are working on belt sanders as well. So. We are working on belt sanders as well. Those will be coming in soon. We see custom design. Put the finishing touches on that, so that'll be a nice addition to the mix. Let me go a little bit nicer. Hold on. Okay. We also have handles coming in soon. Oh, really? Yeah. I want to specifically get the handle names right because they're they're important. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just finish off this one yeah. last little clip. No, we're this will be a sharp one. How many hours a day are you are you in the forge? Too many. <laughs> Too many. And if you ask my boss, not enough. <laughs> No so, happy medium. There you go. Oh, wow. I mean, it still takes a little bit more refinement, but. So let's take a look at this not blade. not too bad for a hot shop without uh, too much work. A little more refinement needed, but it, like, like, I don't know what you would refine. It's perfect. Well, you've got to <laughs> sharpen. We have to do the tempering process. So we've just hardened it. Okay. It's also the next step, which is I'll what we would I'll switch sides use. with you. The next step would be to use like the little temper, the toaster oven. Okay. So we need to. So imagine steel, <laughs> imagine you are steel. I am steel. Just put that in your brain. Okay. And steel acts a lot like you and me. Yeah. I took you and threw you in a lake in January. Manitobans know January, yeah. lakes well. Not good. Whoa, you like cool off so quick you get rigid and like angry and yeah. you're gonna snap right away. Yeah. What we just did was we threw the steel in a lake. In January. In January. And it's very ah, tough, very brittle, good. very angry. And so 
if we took you and threw you in a lake right now, you'd yeah, be like, I'd, thank you. Cool, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, thank and you'd you. take a hit yeah. and you'd bend instead yeah. of break and you'd be like, this is awesome. So what we need to do is we need to find a temperate area between those two zones. We need a little bit of anger and a little bit of cool, cool, man. So okay. what we do is we dump it in the lake in January and then we put a reflective blanket around it. And that's the tempering process that the toaster oven. We take it up to about 300 and, well, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that's like wrapping that emergency blanket around them. So they're not angry, but, but they're still pissed, but, but not still, as pissed. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> they're still kind of mad. So we still have to do that process. But that okay. process is dull and um, it doesn't show much. We can do right. also another forging um tempering process here in the forge and i can show you that sure. real quick if we have time yeah we have time let's do let's do another okay. little let me show you this up process. just a smidge while, while we're while we're doing that i'm gonna ask you a couple more questions okay before we uh the what's the weight of the hammer that we're using for forging pardon me weight of the hammer we're using for forging i use anywhere from a kilogram to a kilogram and a half okay and we do we do sell the blacksmith hammers at I believe, I don't know if we sell them or not actually. We'll have to confirm that. That was a question that came in. Do you sell blacksmith hammers at Princess Auto? I know we got the tongs, we got all the accessories, and yes, we do smell the hammers as well. We sell those too. So we're gonna finish this process here off camera. We're gonna get this thing perfect. But thank you so much, oh, Matt, no for having problem. us here at Cloverdale Forge. This has been a real treat. Um, learned a lot. Before we leave, uh, we gotta announce the winner. Let's announce the winner. Gordon G. Tamas is the winner. Gordon, congratulations, or Gord, if you go by Gord or Gordo, we'll get you these gloves. These are yours, Trial by Fire Watson gloves. Now, before we leave, we'll just end on this. So, someone who's just starting to get into forging, which, which of these would you suggest? If you're getting started, start as the apprentice. Okay. And eventually work up to the master. Yeah. This is a three gun, it'll cook you out of your shop in no time. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I have no doubt that this would heat this place in the winter. Yeah. Um, but this will get you going for enough of the practice, get you the hooks, get you just about any knife, um, anything that you really want. Perfect. So there you heard it from here first. Start with The Apprentice, work your way up. Thank you so much once again, Matt. No problem. We'll see you guys all next time on See at Work.